today we're going to talk about um, art glass. And art glass is a very wide area of um, special glass. Uh, the, they make uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pieces of art glass nowadays. Back uh, in the 19th century, not nearly so much. There were a few companies that made uh, art glass and it was really kind of considered to be kind of a whimsical kind of thing where you uh, um, where you kind of design something just for fun. So this uh, this item here is a a crackle glass little vase with uh, as you can see an applied uh, flower on the front and a jack in the pulpit uh, kind of rim and applied feet that were stuck on the bottom. Uh, all of this was molten glass and it was all handmade and very individual. Uh, I really think the, the company just made them for a little while and each one is not going to be the same as the other because as I say it's just uh, one or two or three people making the glass item and that's that. This happens to be made by a company called Stevens and Williams in Stourbridge, England, and in about between 1880 and about 1900. Uh, they were, this was one of their really um, popular styles and kind of uh, identifiable, especially among collectors who are very knowledgeable about these kind of things. This is a this is a Stevens and Williams piece. This is a Stephen, uh, Stevens and Williams piece. As you can see, it's got a, uh, a different colored rim, which is actually Vaseline glass. It'll, it'll light up under a black light. And this around the, the, the vase is called Riggery. And then the, the, the vase itself is cranberry and swirled. So it's uh, kind of interesting. This is... This and this plate are uh, very early Fenton uh, pieces. And when I say very early, I think probably uh, of the 1890s, 1900, and somewhere in there. Uh, you'll, you'll notice that it's a little different than the Fenton currently. They're, they're blown individually and handmade. And you'll see a, a pontal. This is a pontal scar. A pontal is the is where the pipe comes up to the to the glass, and uh, the glass is spun around and made into a certain shape, and then they'll use a tool to, to shape it further. But when they get all done, they come along and clip it off. By that time, the glass is pretty hard. You know, clip it off, and then the piece that's left is a very rough uh, piece of glass on the bottom. They'll grind it down and then polish it. So that's why it looks like this. And so anytime you see a, uh, a vase that looks like this on the bottom, that's because it was handmade with a uh, blowgun and, uh, and is uh, usually a much earlier, older piece of, uh, piece of glass. This is, happens to be... Uh, what's called a tri-twig, a three-twig uh, three with a, a very, very unusual finish as well. Of course, they, this is also hand-painted just beautifully. But um, this finish has lots and lots, lots of gold in it underneath a, a green um, glass. So, you know, any way you turn it or so on, it really refracts in the light and just shows off beautifully. Um, these glasses are, um, I don't know who made these glasses, but they are, they look like they're probably in the 30s, something like that. Uh, but somebody had fun make, making them. They're very unusual. And interestingly enough, they made two of them that pretty much look alike, although they're different colored stems, they're the same, same style. Uh, this, this bowl here 
is, uh, is, is made by a Murano company. Murano is a company in Italy, uh, around Venice. It's made, it's called Millefiori. Millefiori is uh, um, basically in Italian means the thousand flowers. And how they achieve this effect or so on is they have sticks of glass that they heat and then they cut off little bitty tips of it, tip, 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 right? They embed them in the cobalt blue vase and then uh, they heat it again so that it smears and now they stretch out the vase and now they, they manipulate it so that you can see uh, the thousand flowers. So that's a, that's a very popular thing and it has been popular for several hundred years. Uh, the more modern um, Murano glass, this is, these, these little stickers are absolutely modern. These are made last week, right? And uh, uh, they're, yeah, they, made, they make hundreds of them or so on, but they're still fun. They're still uh, interesting. They've still got a lot, a lot, a lot of color, and uh, they sell a lot of them around the world. This, uh, this chicken is also a Murano, Murano and it's, uh, it's got um, copper flex for the, for the finish and then covered with clear glass or so on. This is kind of an art glass classic, so to speak. Uh, this is also Murano. And so it's not, Murano does, just doesn't make these kind of things or so on. It makes a lot of different things. And really, because it's kind of a guild, it's not just one single company or, or individual, but it's uh, pretty much from that area of Italy and uh, a lot of people. But you have to have to comply with their standards in order to, to be able to have that sticker. So uh, that's basically uh, art glass. This again is Stevens and Williams. Uh, you can see kind of the, the style, uh, and uh, it, it just, uh, it's a lot of fun. Our glass is, there's just uh, no limit whatsoever to what they can create when they've got a blowpipe and a lot of time, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun to shop for. You, uh, when you shop for things that are 100 years old, or antiques, you want to be sure that you're getting a real one, and uh, you'll uh, go to the books, go to go to the internet, and uh, and check on Stevens and Williams or Murano or or you know any other the other art class people, and you'll see that there are a lot of really fun things out there in art class.